Hi, this is going to be a review of Chapter 7, which is um, Solving Systems of Linear Inequations and Inequalities, and then Using Systems for Word Problems. Okay, here's a system of equations, and if I ask if negative 2 comma 9 is a solution, what I'm asking is, will that point, if I put negative 2 in for x and 9 in for y, will it make both equations true? Well, let's see. When I put the point negative 2 comma 9 into both of the equations, it gives me a true result in the second equation, but the first equation, that is not true. So I have to say the answer to the question is a resounding no, because in order to be a solution, it has to make both equations true. Okay, here is a system of equations, and it says solve by graphing. Now to solve by graphing, I'm going to have to, first of all, put each of these equations in slope-intercept form. Now the first one is already in slope-intercept form, but let's uh, take the second one and put that in slope-intercept form. Alright, you can see that I took this second equation, I subtracted 3x, and then I divided by negative 2, and I got my second equation. So I've written that up here. So now what I need to do is graph both of these equations and see where they cross. So the first one has a plus 4 for my y-intercept, so I'm going to put a dot on 4, and remember that if there is no run, we put a 1. So I'm going to put a 1 under there. So that means the rise is negative 2, so I'm going to go down 2 and over 1. I'm going to go down 2 again and over 1, and just to kind of establish where my line is, and then I'll draw my line. Okay, you can see now that I have drawn my first line, so now I need to draw my second line. The y-intercept for the second line is at negative 3, so I go down to negative 3 and I put a dot. My slope is 3 over 2, so I'm going to rise 3, run 2, rise 3, run 2, and that will give me my second line, so I'll draw that. Alright, you can see by this that my point of intersection is going to be the point right here, which is the point 2 comma 0. So the solution to this system is the point 2 comma 0. Okay, here's another problem. This says solve by graphing. So to do that, I first need to write down what my border equations are going to be. Okay, here's the first equation. My border equation has an equal sign, and because there's no equal bar here, I know it's going to be dotted. I also need to put this in slope-intercept form so I can graph it, and that's going to look like y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. All right, for the second one, I'm going to just draw the arrow down here. If I put uh, Write that as x minus y equals 2. That's my border. It's also going to be dotted because there's no equal bar under there. And when I put it in slope-intercept form, I get y equals x minus 2. Okay, so let's start with the first one. We're going to graph that, and then we'll come back and do our shading. Okay, I've drawn my line. My y-intercept is 2, and I went down 2 over 3. Now, in order to do my shading, I'm going to test a point. The easiest point to test is 0, 0, as long as it's not on your line. And make sure you test it in your very original problem. So 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is supposed to be greater than 6. Well, that's 0 plus 0. That's 0 greater than 6. That's false. So if it's false, you do not shade the side that that point was on. You shade the other side. Okay, now it's time to graph the other line. Y-intercept is negative 2, and my slope is 1. So I'm going to think of that as 1 over 1. So I'm going to rise 1, run 1, draw my line. Okay, you can see I've drawn the line. It's a dotted line. And now I have to decide by testing which side I shade. I'm going to test 0, 0 again because my line does not go through 0, 0. 
And this one's uh, relatively easy. I've got x minus y less than 2. Okay, is 0 less than 2? It is. That's true. That means I need to shade the side that 0, 0 was on. Okay, so if I shade the side that 0 was there on, that's the green. The part that is doubly shaded is, is the part that is up here that has both green and blue. So if I clean this up a little bit, I'll, I'll use a different color and, and highlight that. Okay, I've highlighted in yellow the part that was double covered from our previous graph. So what's in yellow is the solution to this system. Okay, if I want to match the correct classification, I need to review what these are. Inconsistent means the lines are parallel and there's no solution. If there is a solution, at least one, then we say the system is consistent. If the lines are different lines, then they're independent lines. If they are the same line, we say they're dependent. So the way that I can do this without actually having to solve these is I'm going to put them all in slope-intercept form as if I were going to graph them and then look at their slopes. Okay, this first system, I get two equations for two lines. The slopes are different, which automatically means those are not the same line and they're not parallel lines. So those would be independent lines and this would be C. For the second one, notice that the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same, so these are actually the same line which means they're dependent, which is B. And the third one, notice that, oops, I have this one wrong, sorry, hang on. Notice that they were already in slope-intercept form. The slopes are the same, so they have the same steepness, but they had different y-intercepts, so these are parallel lines, and parallel lines are inconsistent. Okay, let's look at solving by substitution. What you need to do to start with is pick one of the equations and solve for either x or y. I'm going to take the top equation and I'm going to solve for y. Now it makes more sense to solve for y than x because y doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. So if I solve for y, I get y equals 5x minus 6. So what that means is whenever I see a y, I'm going to take 5x minus 6 and I'm going to substitute it for y. So I'm going to take this equation and make my substitution. Alright, I've made my substitution. I took out the y and I put in 5x minus 6. Now just a, just a quick note, please make sure that you're very careful because this minus has to go all the way through. So now we're going to solve that equation. Alright, I solved the equation. I got x equals 3. Now I need to take that up and put it back in this equation to see what y is. So I've got y equals 5x minus 6. I'm going to substitute 3 in for the x and solve for y. Alright, I solve for y and I got y equals 9. So my answer should be 3 comma 9. But what one more thing we need to do is we need to check it. I won't require you to check it in both equations, but we're at least going to check it in the one that we did not use to find our second variable. Okay, I ran a check. I put 3, 9 into this second equation and it checked. So I can say that the solution is the point 3, comma, 9. Alright, let's look at this. It says solve the system by the addition method. If we're going to use the addition method, we need to try and get either the x terms to be opposite or the y terms to be opposite. Sometimes you'll need to multiply through just once, but it looks like for this one I'm going to need to do a double multiplication. Now I'm going to choose to get rid of the y's because they already have opposite signs. Now the smallest number that they will both go into is 6. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3 to get a 6y and the bottom equation by 2 to end up with a negative 6y. So let's do that and see what our new system looks like. Alright, here's my new system and my only word of caution is to make sure when you multiply through, you multiply through all the way through on both sides. Sometimes people forget to multiply on the right side of the equal sign. Alright, now this system is equivalent to this one so when I look at this 
If I add those equations together, I get 19x plus 0y equals 76. And that's an easy one to solve. I'm obviously going to divide by 19 and x equals 4. From this point, it's going to look just like the problem that we just finished. Once you find one of the variables, you need to stick it back up into one of these equations and find the other. Now, let's not put it in here because if you've made a mistake getting from here to here, it's not going to show up. So pick either one of the original problems. Um, I'll just take the 3x plus 2y equals 18 and I'm going to put 4 in and see what y is. All right, when x is 4, I find that y is 3. So that means the solution is the point 4, comma 3. And I'll leave the check up to you. Okay, here's a word problem. Nancy invested $15,000, some at 8%, some at 10%, annual interest. If her combined annual interest is 1330, find the amount in each account. So we're trying to find the amount in each account. All right, we are going to do these with two variables. We've done them with one variable, but now we're going to do them with two. When you do a word problem like this with two variables, most of your thinking is going to happen in step three, but step two is, uh, in this case, going to be our buckets. So in the bottom of the bucket, I'm going to put how much I have. In the top of the bucket, I'm going to put my percent. So I've got one account that's 8% interest. The other one is 10%. I don't know how much is in each, so I just I don't even really think about it. I put X and Y. Over in this last bucket, remember that the, this, these buckets stand for interest. If I'm told the entire amount for interest, I'm going to put that in the last bucket. So for my step three, if I have in, introduced two variables, I need two equations. Well, the first one is going to come from the fact that I've got a total of $15,000. So I know that x plus y has to equal $1,500. My second equation is going to come from multiplying my buckets. 0 0.08 times x plus 0 0.10 times y equals $1,330. So there's my system. What I have to do now is solve it, and you can solve it using any method you want. I think I'm going to do a couple things here. First of all, I'm going to multiply through this equation by 100, so I can clear those decimals. Okay, when I multiply through by 100, it moves the decimal point over two places for each term on each side of the equal sign. So now I have this new system. Now I notice that in this bottom equation, I see that there is a common factor of 2. These are all even. So to make the numbers even a little bit smaller, I'm going to divide all the way through by 2. You can do that for any equation. You can multiply through or divide through by any non-zero number, and you'll get an equivalent system because you have equivalent equations. So now here's my new system. Now I do need to decide my method. I could either multiply the top equation by a negative 4 or a negative 5, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and do substitution. So $8,500 was invested at 8% and $6,500 was invested at 10%. Okay, here's one last problem. The candy shop sells malted milk balls, my favorite, for $8.15 per pound and chocolate covered peanuts, also my favorite, for $6.95 per pound. The manager wants to make 80 pounds of a mix that sells for $7.25 a pound. How many pounds of each should he put in the mix? So let's get this set up. Okay, I've got it set up through step two. I wrote down what we were trying to find, and for my buckets, I put the price per pound in the top, and notice that I wrote it in cents instead of dollars, just to avoid working with all those decimals. I don't know how much I have, so I put X and Y. 
Now I need two equations. First of all, I know, looking at the bottom of my buckets, that x plus y must equal 80. And then for my second equation, I will do my bucket equation. 815x plus 695y equals 725 times 80. And then I'm going to solve this system. You can see when we solve the equation, I get y equals 60. And then we go up here and we put it back in and we find x equals 20. 20 was molten milk balls. Um, the y, which is 60, is the peanuts. So I write my conclusion.